So is he or isn't he? Is the Times Square lousy attempted car bomb kid connected to terrorist groups overseas or isn't he? Last week in the initial reporting after the arrest of a suspect in the case, there were a lot of anonymously sourced claims that he had connections to the Pakistani Taliban. Then on Thursday, a spokesman for the Pakistani Taliban said, although they were delighted by that attempted attack, Faisal Shehzad was not connected to them at all. Quote, we have no relation with Faisal. However, he is our Muslim brother. That was Thursday. The following day on Friday, the head of CENTCOM, David Petraeus, also said there was no known connection between the Times Square suspect and the Taliban, calling him a, quote, lone wolf. So Thursday, Taliban says he's not connected. Friday, Petraeus says he's not connected. Then two days later on Sunday, the administration says he is connected. Well, I can say that the evidence that we've now developed shows that the P Pakistani Taliban has directed this plot. Mr. Uh, Shahzad, uh, who attempted to carry out the attack in Times Square, uh, it looks as though he was operating on behalf of the Tariqi Taliban Pakistan. That's the TTP. That's the Taliban within Pakistan. So don't believe what you heard before. As of this weekend, the official line is that the Times Square lousy attempted car bomb kid is connected to the Taliban in Pakistan. Unless he's not. I am not convinced uh, by the information I've seen so far uh, that there was uh, adequate uh, confirmable intelligence to corroborate the statements that were made on Sunday television shows. After a closed-door briefing yesterday with senior intelligence and law enforcement officials involved in the Shehzad investigation, the senior senators on the Intelligence Committee couldn't collectively answer the is he or isn't he question. One of them said the suspect is connected to the Taliban. One said he isn't. Here again, Kit Bond of Missouri saying he isn't. There are lots of suspicions. Uh, there are lots of assumptions. But I don't believe, having looked at it, that it shows a solid tie with the Pakistani Taliban. But wait, then another senator, chair of the Intelligence Committee, after the same briefing, said not only is he connected to the Pakistani Taliban, she wants to take it one step further. I think there is a very high likelihood uh, that there were interactions between this suspect and the Pakistani Taliban. I also believe that the Pakistani Taliban ought to be on the designated list, terrorist list. Is nobody else a little weirded out by the fact that we can't get a straight story about this? I would be perfectly comfortable with the answer we don't know. We're investigating. We're investigating possible connections, investigating both here and in Pakistan. We don't know yet. We'll let you know when we know. That would make sense. But instead, we get these categorical firm statements that the suspect both has and hasn't been conclusively connected to the Taliban. It's one thing if this sort of contested information is used to decide whether or not the Taliban is on the designated terrorism list. We know they're not exactly on a government-approved ecotourism list in the meantime. The really big deal here is that the Taliban and the Taliban's connections to al-Qaeda are the whole justification for why we continue to be mired in the ninth year of a war in Afghanistan right now, which we were reminded of today by the president's joint appearance with Hamid Karzai. Today we are reaffirming our shared goal to disrupt dismantle and defeat al-Qaeda and its extremist allies in Afghanistan and Pakistan, and to prevent its capacity to threaten America and our allies in the future. We are in Afghanistan purportedly to prevent another government takeover by the Taliban, which would allow al-Qaeda, or maybe even the Taliban itself, to use that region as a safe haven from which they could project violence, project force against the Western world since, as the president says, al-Qaeda and its extremist allies are in both Afghanistan and Pakistan. Why are, we, why are we just at war in Afghanistan and not officially in Pakistan, too? It's a very good question. It's an important question. It's a critically important question. We've made it very clear that if, heaven forbid, uh, an attack like this that we can trace back to Pakistan uh, were to have been successful, uh, there would be very severe consequences. Very severe consequences. The question of whether or not the Times Square lousy attempted car bomb kid is connected to the Taliban is not just frustrating because we can't get a straight story about it. It isn't just bewildering that there's been such a lack of rigor in the news coverage about it. It is worrying because getting a real answer to that question, a real answer, could change the world rather dramatically. 
Joining us now is NBC's chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel. Richard, thank you very much for being here. It is always a pleasure. How are you? I, I'm okay, but I, I so am. So I have the responsibility now of, of changing the world dramatically? Well, I sort of feel, I sort of feel like I'm back in, ta in talk-me-down territory. All right. Looking at all those conflicting statements, all that conflicting evidence. It shows how it, how combined all these groups are right now. Okay. You can be a member of Al-Qaeda and a member of the Taliban and a member of the Pakistani Taliban and you could be all of these things at once or you could be in contact with all of these different groups. They live in the same neighborhoods. They don't make, these groups don't make these kind of distinctions that we do. If you're an American jerk watching YouTube videos and agreeing with what they're saying and you're you've never a lone signed, wolf. you're a lone wolf. And this guy was a lone wolf. So in the sense that he was inspired by but exactly. not directed by. Exactly. He wanted to do this. Who was behind this attack? Was it the Pakistani Taliban? No, it was this kid. Yeah. He was behind the attack. Now, he wanted to do this. He was inspired to do this. He went to Pakistan to find some people who could help him do this. And he found people who were involved in all of these different organizations, Al-Qaeda, the Pakistani Taliban, Kashmiri groups. They're all working together. They don't make these distinctions. I've met people from the Taliban, they, and I asked them, I said, are you, are you also working with Al-Qaeda? And he looked at me as if he didn't understand the question. Be like, we're all Muslims. We're all together. We're all friends. That's how it works Not over here. Not that every Muslim is part of it, but that we see one another as, as a, a Muslim unit. Fellow travelers. Exactly. No, no, obviously not every Muslim yeah. is part of it, but in their opinion, every good Muslim should be part of it. That's right. the way they see the movement in, in their extremist outlook. So it's the kind of the new model. You have someone from here, someone who wanted to do this kind of attack, and went over as a freelancer and found some support. Are there things that happened when he was in Pakistan that without them he couldn't have pulled off what he pulled off? Um, yeah, probably. Uh, he, he got extra moral support, more conviction to do it, but was it necessary for him to go all the way to Pakistan? It probably helped push him over. Yeah. It convinced him that this was ultimately the, the, the right thing to do. And, uh, but could he have done it in the States on his own? Maybe. When you see Hillary, Hillary Clinton say, we made it clear that, heaven forbid, if an attack like this that we can trace back to Pakistan were to have been successful, there would be very severe consequences. I feel like that sort of categorical statement from the Secretary of State mixed with all the he's connected, he's not connected, well, he's not connected, connected, he's not connected. She's not saying we're going to invade Pakistan. I think that means there's going to be more drones. There's going to be more, more, of, what we're more of what we're already doing. If there is a, this can be linked back to a particular camp in Waziristan, then you can expect there's going to be drones raining down on this. I don't think this was a, a threat to, to invade the, the sovereign territory of, of Pakistan. In, in terms of my frustration, which I've been more vocal about than I would otherwise usually be about a media story. No, um, I can't believe that. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I get, I'm vocal about everything, but I don't usually, I'm not usually a person who invades about how things are covered. But I found this story very frustrating because of the number of anonymously sourced, uh, seemingly self-serving and mutually contradictory well, there statements. There is a self-serving element in this. Yeah. And the, the U.S. has an interest in trying to say that this was uh, directed by the Pakistani Taliban. The U.S. has a direct motive in linking this to the Pakistani Taliban, and that is to pressure Pakistan. The U.S. wants Pakistan to act more aggressively in an area called North Waziristan. Mm -hmm. And in order, by, by saying, ah, there are direct links with the Pakistani Taliban, which is based primarily in North Waziristan, you're putting pressure on the Pakistani government to do, to, something. To do something, to go and engage more more aggressively in that area. And that so there also, is clearly a motive to link it. And to the, the other Pakistan side time. of that coin is that the Pakistani government has a great interest in saying, oh, this kid had no links. This kid is just on his own. And, he's and the Pakistani military has been saying that. Yeah. We are not sure we're still investigating because going in, it's, they don't want to be pressured into a, a dangerous uh, military offensive by the United States or by some bad car bomber. And that would be really helpful context for people to put in all of these dumb news stories and all the papers about these anonymous sources that nobody contextualizes in terms of the motivations of this anonymous speaker. It's well, it, it's a very, and it is very uh, nebulous uh, in terms of how these groups operate. And, and as you say, if you can blame a particular group and that influences Pakistan, then you have a political motivation. Let me ask you about one other domestic component of this, Richard, and that is we're seeing 
we're seeing fault lines uh, in, ex in, in, in explanations of this, and even in, 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 in assertions about the validity of the evidence in this case. So you see Kit Bond versus Dianne Feinstein today, obviously both coming out of the same briefing, obviously both senior members of the same committee, Dianne Feinstein, the chair. We're also seeing, in terms of the sourcing on how what this story really is, uh, different law enforcement sources telling reporters different things. The NYPD and the FBI notoriously competitive on counterterrorism Absolutely. cases. Is that part of why there have been so many self-serving leaks about this case? I, I was actually told that the FBI and the and NYPD worked very closely on this and the intelligence sharing, at mm. least in capturing uh, Faisal Shehzad and getting information up the chain of command was, was, was quite Went, went quite well. I think it's more going back to this, this thing that people don't quite understand how these groups operate. And if I'm a freelancer and I go over to Pakistan on my own and I want to carry out this kind of attack and I do it and I meet people, well, was I a freelancer or was I working for them at the time? It's where does the contract begin? Who's your employer if you're a freelancer? Right. And so, so it's so, non yeah. un understandable non-specificity. Yeah, I think so. Richard Engel, NBC's chief foreign correspondent and always a very illuminating guest. Thank you so My much, Richard. Pleasure. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Bye.